This is the Oklahoma Talking Company. Welcome to Activate Your Strengths with Rhonda Boyle. StrengthsFinder 2.0 is an analytical assessment created by Gallup Corporation, and many people today are using it to change their lives, improve their relationships, and enhance their work experience. This is the podcast where we explore using your natural talents and gifts in your personal and professional development. And now, here's your host, Rhonda Boyle. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to the Activate Your Strengths show. My name is Rhonda Boyle. Oh, my gosh. Jason Baffrey, can you feel the energy this morning? I'm, I'm feeling competitive is what I'm feeling. <laughs> I feel like feeling... I need to go get in, involved in a race or something. I know. Pull out a basketball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, this is the first time this has happened. We have six of the influencing or promoter talents in the studio this morning because my guest is also almost all gold like me. Yes. So she is originally from Midwest City, Oklahoma. She left for a while, went to college in Kansas, and then moved back to Oklahoma City in 2011. She is a financial representative. In fact, she is Hashtag your financial rep is what she goes by. Welcome, Miss Kathy Wade. Hi, so glad to be here. Thank yeah. you, Rhonda. Thank you, Jason. I am excited to have you here this morning. So we always start out by inviting you to tell us what your top five are. Well, my top five is number one is competition. Mm-hmm. Number two is positivity. Three is woo, which is win others over. Yep. Um, four is communication. And then five, significance. That's right. <laughs> so for those of you who are joining us and don't know about the Strengths Finder assessment, it's by Gallup Corporation. Right. And it identifies your top talents. They've identified that there are 34 natural talents that we have, but we, and we all have them. You have all of them. Mm -hmm. Jason, you have all of them and I have all of them. But the question is, how are they in dominance? So you are dominant in competition, (laughs) positivity, woo, communication, and significance. So uh, let me ask you this. When you first heard about the test, first tell us how you even heard about it. Well, a good friend of mine, uh, Teresa Marshall, I had coffee with her. I was going to a networking at the time known as The Givers. Yes. And uh, we had coffee, and she immediately told me her top five, and I looked at her, and was kind of unsure what that meant and she was like oh you have to take this test it'll tell you more about your personality and how to live in your strengths I was like this is very overwhelming (laughs) so but I trusted (laughs) Teresa so I took the test and then um, here I am with my top five well and you've taken a lot of tests right because now they they do assessments like every other week in colleges right oh, especially absolutely. in leadership training mm-hmm. and so you mentioned that you had done several other tests but oh, yeah. this one was different yeah normally you do a uh, test for job orientations college so be it and they'll do a color test and sure. um, it always said the same thing that it was fun very outgoing right and so this was more specific right um, it let me know the strengths and the weaknesses that you have A lot of tests just focus on what you're good at and not really how um, your weaknesses. Well, actually, the it's the these are it's a talent test, and that's where I think a lot of people are confused. And with these talents is where you find your strengths. So it's called Strengths Finder. It doesn't mean you're necessarily strong here, Mm -hmm. and that's also where your weaknesses are found. Right. So I think you've discovered that through a workshop that you came to, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so each one of these talents has a deep, profound need. And unless you get that need met, that's when you trip up and we say you get into the outhouse because you stink. (laughs) (laughs) So anyway, yeah, so when you first got your top five, okay, so you take the test, it's 177 questions. It seems like it's gonna go on forever, (laughs) but it's really 25 minutes. So you got your results. What did you think? I think this actually nailed exactly about me to a T. Um, Isn't it amazing? Described me 100%. -hmm. And then when you had, I had been talking to you and you said, well, people that have these strengths live within their strengths. And when when they're out of their strengths, they're not at their best moments. That's right. And that exactly describes me. (laughs) Yeah. So it was kind of frightening that (laughs) a little overwhelming at some points, but you know, know. that... You know that that a test that 25 minutes it can nail you so specifically exactly so the secret is to now develop these 
into strengths because right, right now they're talents. I mean, you've developed them to some degree, mm-hmm. but for the rest of your life, if you can spend your time developing here right. instead of working on your weaknesses, how much better is your life? Absolutely. And live in your strengths. That's right. Try to live there. And it's all really about taking that journey into self-development and really understanding who you are so that you can go out and get what you want this way. So let's talk about your number one talent. (laughs) Who would think that competition is a talent? But it is. It's an amazing talent that brings magnificent energy. And just walking in the door here, we can feel your energy. I can even feel your energy. And I have big energy. (laughs) So tell us about that competition. Oh, competition. Um, I'm a very big sports person. Yes. Um, I've been playing sports since I was four years old. Three sports. Um, I'm an only child, so my parents put me into sports um, at a young age. And sports was just as important as academics when I was younger. Um, Not only did I have to do well in school, but sports was right up there. All right. So every day after school, I was either going to a practice that my mom, you know, had food for me in the car. And Mm -hmm. I was running to practice, getting home late, doing homework. And so I love sports. Um, I'm very competitive. I played, obviously, college basketball for uh, Bethany. Go Swedes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, get that plug in. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) And um, very happy doing that and did well. Um, so you mentioned in, in our, we did a little pre-interview, you mentioned that you were not the referee's favorite player. Oh, no. <laughs> well, why very, is that? I, I, especially when I was younger, I was a very emotional player. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if I thought there was, you know, a bad call or anything like that, then I was the first to let the referee know. <laughs> And so I still play competitively on sure. Monday nights, and I'm probably still not the referee's favorite. So do you play, um, so what What do you play, basketball? Basketball, yes. Right. It's a women's league. So that's your favorite. Oh, yeah. Your favorite sport. Oh, yeah. And I get very competitive and very emotional. So it's all in good fun. You know, now I'm not competing, obviously, for trophies and in college anymore, but it's more competition amongst yourself and how sure. well you're doing. So Yeah, so um, I think you mentioned that um, – you had a time in your life where you weren't able to compete in college. Right. So tell us what happened then. So at the end of my freshman year, I actually uh, broke my wrist in two places. And um, I missed almost my entire sophomore year due to injury. And till this day, I've had 16 surgeries all on both my hands and elbows. And at one point, you know, in college, I was told that I wasn't going to be able to play again. But luckily, I found a really great surgeon that's actually in Oklahoma City, Dr. Right. Siraj. He did all of my surgeries. And not only did I play my junior and senior year, I played at a very high level. It was all conference, won a lot of awards there. Sure. And so that's he got amazing. me back on the court fast. Yes, yes. But it was oh, yeah. really your desire to compete. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, I had really great people. I wouldn't be who I am today without really great mentors in my life mm-hmm. around me. Uh, one of those people was my shooting coach, Marcus Hicks, you know, yes. getting me up at six in the morning when I had a cast on my arm telling me to go shoot in the gym. Wow. You know, so he, he pushed me. That's good. Um, and that's what you oh, needed. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what I needed. You know, I was sure. obviously depressed. This is, you know, my first surgery and a wow. lot of, you know, not being able to play the game I loved. But mm-hmm. luckily, I had really good support from my teammates who were awesome, awesome people. And then a great coaching staff who you know motivated me to play at a higher level right and you are still competing today oh absolutely here's the thing about competition is you need to compete yes it's a need for you you need a worthy opponent also right you want to pay your measurement oriented and so you like to pace yourself and get in there and get after it and then run for the win yes so (laughs) what is second place to you Second place is not fun. <laughs> not fun at it's all. It's like first place loser, right? Yes, yeah, it is. Um, yeah. In college, when we'd have a loss or anything like that, I would probably be up to two, three in the morning watching game tape. And even when I'd have a good, really good shooting game, even the shots I would miss, I would say, you know, what mechanics did I do wrong right. that made me miss the shot? So I'd have to do a lot of reevaluating. And um, since I can't play, obviously, sports in college anymore, I've taken that to my career. Sure. So, you know. Um, what I do is insurance, financial services. So when I do have a loss or anything or not where I need to be, I do a lot of reevaluating. How can we move forward and make things better? Right. Things like that. Well, now, I just want to say that that is a healthy way of handling a loss. 
some people who have competition lose and they have to put themselves to bed for, you know, <laughs> three days or three weeks or three months, you right. know, and they they it literally is, you know, just totally stifling. It very it's very painful. People don't recognize how painful it is. Rhonda, um, I just want to jump in here for mm-hmm. our listeners that are new uh, or may be new to the Strengths Finder test. Explain a little bit about what I mean, having competition in as a top strength what are the benefits of it, especially when it's a number one? I mean, we obviously hear that Kathy's very competitive athletically and and in business, but um, how does that strength particularly work? And then how is it a benefit in, in life as people go forward? Well, she wants to win, right? Oh, you, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Winning is everything. And you strive to win. You're motivated. And you, you bring great energy that actually pulls other people to you because – Everyone wants to follow a winner. So here's the deal. I want to be on your team. And <laughs> people want to be on your Anytime. team. So pick me, pick me. I'm going to be up there standing, you know, because it's that's what it is. It's the, it, it brings that desire. That desire to win is so compelling. And you will only compete when you know you're going to win. Like there's a knowing inside of you, which is why it's so desperate, you know, devastating when you lose because you didn't meet your own internal expectation. So when you know you're going to win, you you make the rallying call and then people want to follow you. So this is what makes you an excellent leader. So that's where the greatest benefit is, is in your leadership skills. You know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm probably not the best when I lose. You know, we'll have play no, cards have with little, other people. You pitch a little fit, Oh, don't yeah. You? <laughs> we'll play cards with other people. And, you know, if I lose three out of five, we're probably staying up really late until I win those three out of five. So, <laughs> well, that's right. I, you know, I mentioned to you that my daughter, Lara, is she has competition number six. And when she, I'll never forget when she was five years old, I didn't know anything about Strengths Finder at the time, but when she was five years old, we were playing Hi Ho Cheerio. And she was losing and she just picked the board up and just dumped it over all the (laughs) cherries go flying so you know it takes time for you to mature that talent but being able to instead of you know putting yourself to bed or getting frustrated and angry you go over your processes to find out where where the the missing link is and then you take steps to correct it the next time which is why we have to stay up with you and play cards until you win exactly exactly because you're processing that (laughs) well it's an excellent uh excellent talent and so let's talk about your positivity those of you on the radio listening can't see her but uh we certainly can I have somebody calling me. We need to shut that off. Anyway, uh, we can see the positivity shining on your face. And that's the thing about positivity is that you do. You shine. You have joy and just this positive energy about you that is uplifting. It's actually a, a talent that builds relationships. So you, you, how does that show up for you in your life? Oh, yeah. Um, and what I do as a financial rep, you have to build relationships. And all my clients are good friends of mine, whether they're business owners, um, whatever I'm doing, life or auto or home insurance, whatever it is. I always have a personal relationship with them. I'm not the one to sit behind the desk and make phone calls. I'm the one to go out and meet people face to face and establish a relationship. So that helps me there. It helps me in the numerous uh, networking groups that I'm involved in. Um, it helps me be a relationship finder and want the relationship with my clients and sure. with people that I meet. And I, I strive for that. I love that. Well, and now when you've had times in your life where things have been negative, right. you like sink like a stone. Oh, though. absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, and that it can cause depression and mm-hmm. things like that, you know, and mm-hmm. that would be like when you lose and you can't do anything. Right. So what do you do to get yourself, keep yourself uplifted? Um, luckily I've had, like I said, I, I rely on other people cause I'm a very people oriented person. Sure. I've had great mentorships in my life. Um, when I came new to this business, I had a great, uh, still a great friend of mine, Sebastian, who's a great mentor rep of mine, um, shooting coaches, parents, family, friends, a lot of great people that surround me to keep me uplifted Sure. because if it was just putting everything on myself, you know, that's the weight of the world it on is. you. 
And so I rely on other people to keep me uplifted. Well, and that's important for people with positivity to know is that you cannot keep yourself uplifted. Right. You right. have to depend on other positive people in your Absolutely. life. You have to seek them out. So that's a development point for you. Mm -hmm. Other people that have strengths I don't have. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Now, I understand that you are like the worst patient ever. <laughs> yes, yes. When I am sick, it is it is no fun. No, no doctor or nurse would want to be be around me. I'm a definite big baby. Sure, <laughs> you whiny girl. Oh yeah, I whine and act like it's the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when that positivity, you know, you're not feeling good. Oh no. So it makes you not positive. So you kind of go negative, and mm -hmm. then you know, I have positivity number seven, so I get it. <laughs> we we yeah. go negative pretty fast. You oh know? yeah, we do. When we don't get our need met for. Positive, Absolutely. Positive activity. So let's talk about your woo, Jason. This is the one where, you know, here we are overwhelming you a bit with our energy, aren't we? It's always exciting when the woo, the woos are in. <laughs> the woos are in town. <laughs> That's right. The woos are in the house. So uh, let me ask you. Okay, so woo stands for winning others over, and I like to brag that we are the only talent with an acronym. That's an acronym, right? And so it's funny because anytime the woos are in, with it, they say, "Okay, so we've got woo," and all the woos go woo. -hoo! Oh yeah, <laughs> you know because we're excited about our woo. So you're a big, big networker. Yes, all my business is done through networking. Yeah. So I attend a lot of events and part of a lot of committees, yes, you know, you are. a lot of different groups. Um, so, so how many people would you say you meet a week? At least a thousand. A and I'm thousand around. people yes. that you actually touch and, or, or you're in the presence of, oh, I should absolutely. say. You don't have necessarily really deep conversations with them. As a woo, you know, we have to, you know, we obviously are there and people gravitate towards us. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm still the relationship builder. Seek out, obviously, sure. the great people to build a relationship with. Well, how do you keep up with that many people? It's it's time consuming. Oh, yeah. You get a lar lot of cards passed and thrown at you and, mm -hmm. you, you know, a lot of scheduling lunches and coffees and so be it and how we can better each other's businesses. There's a, a lot of good networking, great sure. people. Well, you have to use some type of technology, I think you mentioned. Oh, yeah. I have um, an app that um, was brought to me by uh, Lisa Qualls uh -huh. that um, I put in my phone that I screenshot people's business cards. So that way, if I know a friend of mine needs an attorney or someone to paint their house, anything, I can search for them really quick and refer out that business. Well, and that's what woos do so well is they are connectors. Absolutely. We are conduits for other people to find, you know, who they need. You know, mm -hmm. as far as um, they need business or they need connections, we are right there because we know probably everybody. Oh, yeah. If if I don't know everybody, you know the rest of Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Right? That's true. <laughs> it is true. So let's talk about your communication. So you love public speaking. Yes, I gravitate towards that. I love speaking at different women's groups or networking groups I'm involved in, um, speaking to businesses. Um, I have to in right. my profession. Sure. I can't be, you know, silent and always behind the scenes. I have to be out there. Right. And uh, I, I love it. I, I'm not the one to write a bunch of notes and then read from a podium. I'm the one to communicate and talk with my hands. Yes. I'm doing a radio show, but I'm talking with my right. hands. Right. <laughs> well, the periscopers <laughs> right. can see us. Right. <laughs> But so, I love I love doing that. Um, I love helping people. Mm -hmm. A big part of what I do. And you're a big storyteller. Yes, yeah. absolutely. You don't I, mind embellishing things a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez, the, all the good ones do. You know. I know. I like to Wouldn't say. Wouldn't be an interesting story if you didn't. You never so. let the facts get in the way of a good story. That's, That's it. right. There you go, Jason. <laughs> That's exactly right. Now, um, one of the things we talked about was writing, and you don't do a lot of writing necessarily. No, I, I really don't. More public speaking and talking and right. not a lot of writing. But that is a point of development for you mm -hmm. because you're quite capable if you can speak or if you can articulate well, then right. you can write well. Absolutely. And, and it may be, it may be the, actually the mechanics of writing that, you know, it seems to be you have to slow down, right, and be <laughs> still for a while. And so, so you know, uh, just a strategy for you could be speaking into a, um, an audio recorder thing on right. your phone, you know, an app on your phone, and then sending that to a transcriber. So, Or we have idea. a uh, like a 1970s era dictaphone in the <laughs> lobby if you'd like to uh, invest in that. <laughs> that's awesome. Yes. He collects antiques. So oh, wow. <laughs> that's why that's in there. Now, I understand that you had a little trouble growing up in class. Yes. <laughs> what yes, happened? Yes, I did. Um, 
every parent teacher conference, I kind of cringed because I knew where my desk would be and it would probably be right next door to the teachers. That's right. Because it didn't matter where you moved me, I was going to talk to everyone. That's right. Everyone was my friend. I feel your pain. <laughs> exactly. I got in a lot of trouble too as a kid. No, exactly. And, you know, my conduct grade would not be an A, B, C, D, uh-uh. or E, or F, or whatever. It would be needs improvement. That's so. right. Mine was needs improvement. They found, oh, absolutely. I found my seven year old report card several years ago now and it said unsatisfactory yes. and it said Rhonda cannot sit still <laughs> and she talks too much you know here I am 50 years later nothing's changed and now you have a radio show I'm, so exactly <laughs> it was all worth it in the exactly. end exactly I, I just sure hope that this movement ends up and there's a new parenting book actually strengths finder for parenting uh, for those of you who have little people and so they the strengths movement is now you know starting to develop kids very very young very good well it needs to be that way Uh because we don't you know in schools we learn how to fix ourselves right we get graded on what we don't against us what we don't know Mm -hmm. instead of being acknowledged for what we do know absolutely so it sets us up really for a um you know this this whole thought process of oh my gosh I've got to fix myself I've got to fix that or I'm not and and instead of living here Mm -hmm. which is where our greatness lies Talking is a good thing, but as long as not the teacher is presenting something or doing an assignment, I understand that. Sure. Talking, communicating, getting to know your classmates is a great thing. (laughs) It is. Well, and you know what? You understand that as a communicator, that when people are whispering over in the corner when you're presenting, that becomes a trigger for you. Right. You know, and that's one thing that irritates us as communicators. I have this talent, too, Mm -hmm. is we want to be heard. Yes. We think that what we have to say (laughs) Say is is quite important. Thank you very much. (laughs) And so it becomes an irritation, you know, if we don't feel like someone's uh, listening to us. So have you ever been in that situation where you're trying to communicate and somebody talks over you? Yeah. um, Obviously, I present Quite a few uh, networking groups of mine or, you know, different businesses, things like that. And you'll get, you know, the people on their phones or talking in the background. You'll just have to talk a little bit louder, you know, and uh, try to hope that they, you know, you're important enough to pay attention to and that you're not boring them to death. So, But at the time (laughs) that it happens, you know, you can kind of feel that tightness in your throat right. and yeah and it, it, it's just an um an indication that your need is not being, being met. met absolutely yeah i'm usually bold enough to say uh excuse me one meeting please <laughs> you know i don't have any problem telling people to listen up here i've got something to say so uh you even mentioned that uh in your college classes that you opted out of the one-on-one classes oh yeah um when i when it came down to having an internet class or having a class full of people i was always picking the class full of people even if that meant i had to get up at seven in the morning you Mm -hmm. know have an early morning class because internet you know communicating back and forth just typing would not do it for me yeah (laughs) you're not getting enough engagement exactly and that's what it's all about for you absolutely which is why you're out networking teamwork make the dream work right that's right (laughs) exactly so let's talk about your significance now this is a rare talent rare less than five percent now we're pushing at the time of this broadcast we're pushing close to thir- over 13 and a half million people now have taken this test wow. and less than five percent have significance and here you are look at you with significance <laughs> so people with significance it's sort of a talent that not a lot of people understand but you're really uh driven to leave a legacy and to make an impact aren't you right absolutely and, you know, um, I do that in my career already. Um, right. Life insurance is a huge thing. People wanting to pass things down to their children, grandchildren, leave a legacy there. Sure. And it makes sense. I, absolutely. And I want to leave my own legacy. And uh, how I do that, I'm very involved in women's groups. Um, American Business Women's Association, I'm a member in there. Yeah. They do a lot of great positive things, women's scholarship program, and maybe one day I could have my own scholarship program for women. I can see it already, the oh. Kathy Wade <laughs> Scholarship for Women. Absolutely. They'd have to, you know, play basketball on the side, oh. too. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> there Just you joking. go. <laughs> but um, I'm also a big uh, advocate for the Animal Humane Society, the yeah. Bella Foundation. Uh, dogs are, I have two Yorkies Aww. that actually I rescued. Um, they're my little fur babies, yes. Lily and Daisy. So I'm a huge activist in that. Um, I would love to have my own animal shelter mm-hmm. one day. 
and help dogs get good homes. Sure. So that's kind of the legacy I want to leave other than, you know, my business and changing people's lives, changing animals' lives, and then changing young women's lives. Well, and it is. It's all about how you want to make an impact. Right. You're always looking for a way to make the biggest impact on our culture to leave something behind. Absolutely. Right. And I love getting involved with different charities and mm-hmm. going to different networking groups that support, you know, where some of the funds at least go to some kind of charity, especially for one of those, you know, things, dogs, um, kids, uh, women groups. That's, sure. That's huge. You know, it makes such a difference on our society. It is. And there's not a lot of women in your industry either. No, there's not. So that's kind of significant, isn't it? Yes. Um, I would love to be have a mentoring ship program where I could mentor some women because it's such a great industry to get involved in. You know, sure. it's not one thing I do. It's every line of insurance and then every, every line of financials. So right. There's a lot of diversity in there. And it's it's a great business to be in for women. And it's just not really sought after. Mm-hmm. So I'd love to be uh, a mentor to get more women involved in this career. Well, and it takes it takes ta- certain talents to be able to do Absolutely. that. And so the more you learn, mm-hmm. the more you're going to be able to identify those women and bring mm-hmm. them on board. And again, making an impact. We can hear you're you're just want to make an impact in that industry too. Exactly. So, we only have one life to live, so you might as well leave. You know, generations. It. Right. You know, in so, a better place. Let me ask you this. Your talents, you you are a very powerful woman when it comes to influence and promotion and that type of thing. How do you see this just showing up in your business in particular? Because we really haven't talked a lot about your business, but how do you see that showing up there? This helps me extremely in my business because not only am I seeking relationships and making good connections, I'm also having to communicate what I do as an insurance agent, financial rep at country. Sure. Um, I'm having to focus on people, focus on building relationships, focus on people's businesses and lives, and then at the same time trying to figure out how I can leave a like legacy for next generations right and at the same time trying to win a little in my business yes <laughs> yes so they the talents really show up all, all through over my business. your well all through your life right they show oh, up right. all over they and they've been present since you were little oh yeah <laughs> this competition and winning the medals you know the the trophies and so forth you know so um those those prizes are important too and and you know you've kind of grown up in a generation where everybody got prizes oh yeah i'm not a big advocate for participation trophies no oh no 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 so you know um, it doesn't even really make <laughs> kids feel good i don't think no um they think it was a self-esteem yeah, issue but in it's... life i mean you're always taught you know there is if you do well enough yeah that's the first step but there is a winner and there is a loser and that does help you in your career that helps you in life because there are going to be times where you can't win at everything and right. you got to learn how to handle that and i think participation trophies <laughs> No good. Do not huh? fall anywhere in that category. That's right. <laughs> well, so tell me, what, is, what do you think is the greatest benefit of knowing your talents and knowing that you get to enter into this, you know, self-development? The greatest benefit is knowing how to live in my strengths and knowing what I do well and also knowing if it's outside of my strengths where it's just, you know, I'm by myself or not involved in something that I don't feel strongly about, then that's probably not the best avenue for me. So my strengths have taught me that, you know, I succeed at these things, that I need to be in the position of these things, and that if I'm not, then I'm probably not going to be as successful as I would living in my strengths, networking, making relationships, public speaking. Exactly. The test really does help you identify where you should be spending your energy Most definitely. Yeah. And I think that uh, in so many, you know, in jobs, for example, and at home and wherever you are, you have to do things that are outside of your talents. Right. But at least you know that it's either temporary, you can, you know, make sure that it's temporary, or you can find ways to partner with other people. Mm -hmm. So I have to get my husband to help me with the laundry, you know, because I just don't want to fold laundry (laughs) by myself. (laughs) But I tell him, if we can just make it a social event, we'll have fun, and we can talk, and then, you know, the laundry gets gets folded instead of three baskets in the laundry room unfolded. So, you know, that's, uh, but that, 
you know, understanding yourself that way allows you to maneuver and mm-hmm. position yourself in a place where you can be most effective. Because, yes. you know, the bottom line in life is that we all want to contribute. But we want to contribute in the ways that feel natural. Right, in that our we own way. Know, yeah, that we know mm-hmm. we're in our best. So anyway, you have amazing talents, and it's been fun having you in this, this morning. So tell everybody how we can reach you. Oh, you can reach me on Facebook, uh, Kathy Wade. It's C-A-T-H-Y-W-A-D-E. Um, also, my country website. I work for Country Financial. Um, I did want to speak a little. I have a all women's networking event coming up. It's April twenty first. Good at six thirty to eight thirty at Quail Creek Country Club, and it's called Taking Control. You can find that on Facebook. Yeah, or you can email me at Catherine dot wade at countryfinancial.com it's a free event so i encourage you um there you we're gonna go. have a networking table out so we can connect with other women business leaders and then it's take control so planning your financial future yeah. sure yeah, good absolutely. good good well we're glad to promote that for you thank well you. thank you so much for coming on today and thank you for joining us you've been listening to the activate your strengths show and my name is Rhonda boyle you can find me at the yellow subgroup.com and you can join our Facebook group at yellow subgroup and you can find me on Twitter at activate strong and on Periscope at activate me. Thanks for joining us, everybody go live in your strengths. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Activate your strengths with Rhonda Boyle is a presentation of Oklahoma talking company. Learn more and listen to other great programs at Oklahoma talking.co. This has been a production of Destiny Creative.